Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Eicher here, bringing lesson six on tree diagrams and our probability unit. Tree diagrams are yet another helpful tool. We have sample spaces, we have two way tables, we have Venn diagrams. Tree diagrams are another helpful tool to answer questions about probability. Uh, and tree di diagrams are maybe out of those ones I've mentioned before. No, two way tables are really, really common. Uh, but tree diagrams, you could be asked to create a tree diagram on the AP exam. That has happened uh, at least once that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but several questions on the free response uh, and the multiple choice are best answered with tree diagrams. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. Uh, tree diagrams are often used when you have like a chronology of events, like one event happens and then the other event is kind of dependent on that first event happening where two-way tables, there doesn't necessarily have to be a chronology. Uh, but tree diagrams, there often is. So let me show you this example to talk about chronology and what I mean by that. Shannon hits the snooze bar on her alarm clock 60% of school days. If she doesn't hit the snooze bar, there's a 90 probability, 0 0.9 probability, she makes it to class on time. However, if she hits the snooze bar, there's less, there's a 70% chance that she makes it to class on time. So notice the chronology here, chronology to this problem. The chronology is like, does she hit the snooze bar? And then after that, her ability to get to class on time, on timeness, is based on does she hit the snooze bar? So when we make our tree diagram, our first branch is first what happens with that snooze bar. Does she hit the snooze bar? She snoozes. Or she doesn't hit the snooze bar, so she actually wakes up on time. So like, she wakes up on time. Uh, and then on the uh, branch of the tree, we could label the probability 60% of school days she hits the snooze bar. So we could put that right here. Uh, each branch adds up to 100, so or adds up to 1 in this case as probabilities. So we could label this branch means, hey, there's 40% of the time that she does not hit the snooze bar and she wakes up on time. Now, after that event, chronologically, we would say, okay, now the next thing in the story, in the chronology, is is she makes it into class on time. So we'll have a branch off of each of these, which is uh, on time or late. On time or late. So if she hits the snooze bar, we're told if she hits the snooze bar, 70% chance that she's on time. That would be 30% chance that she's late. If she does not hit, the snooze bar, there's a 90% chance that she's on time, and that would be a 10% chance that she's late. Now we can answer some probability questions with this, but first I'd like to um, show you symbolically what these are. So first we have this first branch would be the probability she hits snooze. We'll let S B hits snooze, and we'll let T be on time. So this first branch is snooze and being on time. So let me write it like this. We have probability that she hits snooze is 60%, and the probability that she's on time given that she hits snooze is 70%. So there's a 42% chance that she hits snooze and that she's on time given that she hits snooze. The next branch we would have, there's a 60% chance that she hits snooze and there's a 30% chance that she's late given that she hits snooze. So there's 18%. And then the next branch is 40 times 0 0.9, that would be 0 0.36. And then the last branch would be 40 times 0 0.1, and that would be 0 0.04. Um, notice that all of these branches should add up to one, 
these two, now let's do it this way, these two add up to 60, which is that 60 right there, whereas these two add up to 40, and that's that 40 right there. So if we added all of these, we would get one or 100%. That's all the possible scenarios in this question. So on a randomly chosen day, what is the probability that Shannon is late for class? So the probability Shannon is late for class is not just like 30, and it's not just 10, but it's actually which of these branches are the late branches? Well, this one, Shannon would be late, and this one, Shannon would be late. So it's actually 22% or the probability would be 0 0.6 times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 times 0 0.1, which we calculated to be 0.18 plus 0.04. So the probability that Shannon is late would be 0 0.22. Uh, question C, suppose that Shannon is late for school. What is the probability that she hit the snooze bar that morning? So this is a little subtle, but it's really important that you realize that this is telling us a conditional probability. It's giving us the condition. So it's telling us, hey, let's say, given that she's late, what's the probability she hit the snooze button? So we're looking for the probability of snooze given that she's late. And it's really important too to realize just because the first thing in the sentence mentioned being late, it doesn't imply that it has to go first here. You have to think about it in terms of this is the, uh, the basis, this is the start here. That's the condition of what's happening. Hey, let's just suppose she's late for school. That's our condition. What's the probability she hit the snooze bar? So to calculate that, what we're going to need is the probability that she hit the snooze bar and she's late divided by the probability she's late. And the question above, we just calculated the probability she's late right here. So the probability she would be late is 0 0.22 the probability that she hit the snooze bar and she's late, snooze and late, would be that information. So the probability she hits snooze and is late is 0 0.18, 0 0.18. So dividing those, 0.18 divided by 0.22, we would get an answer of 0 0.818. So if you knew that she's late for school, it's really, really likely that she hit the snooze bar, which I hope that makes sense. Like she's more likely to miss school uh, if she hits the snooze bar. Uh, but be careful, the answer just isn't this. Sometimes students wanna say like just that one number is the answer. Uh, but given that she's late, she could have been late in another way. She could have been late as in, you know, she woke up on time, she just happened to be late. 4% of the time. Um, I'd like to look at this same question, but looking at a two-way table. Sometimes with tree diagrams, uh, we can convert a tree diagram into a two-way table. So I have all the same information here that we did before. Um, and sometimes when we have percentages, rather than using percentages, we'll just turn it into counts. So I like to call this, let's just call it a hypothetical 100 days as we make our two-way table. So part of the two-way table would be, does she hit the snooze bar, yes or no? And then the other part of our table, our other yes or no question would be, is she on time, yes or no? So with this information, we're told 60% of days she hits the snooze bar. So treating it like a hypothetical 100 days, 
60% of 100, we'd expect that 60 out of 100, she'll hit the snooze bar. Um, now, the tricky part with the two-way table here is this number doesn't go exactly in the table. So this 90 probability is if she doesn't hit the snooze bar. So we know that there are 40 times out of 100 when she um, does not snooze. And there's 60 out of 100 when she does snooze. So if she hits the snooze bar, there's this probability she makes it to class. So we would not put 70 here. Can you see why that wouldn't make sense? Like 70 plus what is 60? You can't have a negative number in a two-way table. So really what we need is 70% of the time out of our 60 days, that would be 42 in that cell that she hits the snooze and she makes it to class on time. Compared to this 90 here, that would be 90% she makes it to class. So 90% times our hypothetical 40 days that she does not snooze, and that would be 36. And then we can fill in the rest of the table. This would be an 18, this would be a four, 22, a 78 for our totals. So a two-way table can be made, but I find that it makes a little bit more sense to illustrate it like this. Uh, and you might notice that these numbers, 42, 18, 36, and four, those are the same numbers that occurred 42, 36, 18, 4. Those are the same numbers that occurred in our uh, tree diagram as in our two-way table. So let me show you one more example of a tree diagram. Um, first, I have to explain a false positive and a false negative. So a false positive. The positive part is that the like medical test that you're taking, the test says positive, that like maybe you're sick or something. But in reality, um, it's wrong, it's false. Wrong as in false. So that means like you're told that you have some sickness, but you really don't have the sickness. The test was wrong. That's a false positive. A false negative is that the test says negative. The, text, the test says no, that you know, you're fine. But in reality, it's wrong. So that uh, might be a worst case. You're told, oh, you're healthy. You don't have the disease. You're great. You're good to go. But in reality, that's wrong. And you go about thinking that you're healthy, but um, you're not. So those are terms that you should be familiar with. Those are helpful terms just like in life to know about false positive, false negative. But let's look at this next example. Many employers require prospective employees to take a drug test. A positive result on this test indicates that the prospective employee uses illegal drugs. However, not all people who test positive actually use drugs. Suppose that 4% of prospective employees use drugs, and the false positive rate is 5%, and the false negative rate is 10%. So what percent of prospective employees will test positive? So this is a good example. We have multiple percentages being thrown around, but we do have a chronology, right? We have a chronology of like, the first thing that would have to happen is like, do you use drugs? And then after that, sometime you are um, applying for this job where you have to do a drug test. So there's some reality before you apply and do the drug test. Like, do you actually use drugs or not? Yes or no? So we'll make a tree diagram to organize this work. So the first thing is, um, do you use drugs? Yes, drugs, or no, you do not use drugs. And then after that, off of each of these, there's gonna be the test result, a positive test or a negative test. A positive test or a negative test. And then we can fill in this information, 4% use drugs, so that would be 0.04. That means 
0.96 do not use drugs. And the false positive rate. So that is one of the two pluses here, but it's the wrong one. So the top one, this one, if you use drugs and get a positive test, that's accurate. That's a true positive. So it must be this branch that's the false positive of 5%. Whereas the false negative, that's one of the negative tests there. And the false negative is you use drugs, but it says you don't. So that would be this branch, 10%. You use drugs, but it says you don't. That's a false negative. So we could fill in the other branches and we get this tree diagram. And it is really helpful with tree diagrams if you multiply along each branch and fill those in, you'll probably thank yourself later if you do that. So why don't you pause the video and multiply across the branches and get those probabilities and I'll come back and have that all written out next. Voila, we have our uh, using drugs and testing positive number. We have the using drugs and testing negative, no drug use and testing positive, no drug use testing negative. So this question is what percent will test positive? The percent who test positive would be uh, this branch, test positive, and this branch, test positive. So we would be adding these values and that would be our answer for what percent test positive. So it looks like our answer would be adding this one plus this one. So 0 0.036 plus 0 0.048. So that's 0 0.084. And you do want to show that work, that, uh, which ones you're adding there. Um, so basically what we're adding here is like the probability of testing positive would be like drugs and positive tests. Uh, okay, and then B, what percent of prospective employees who test positive will actually use illegal drugs. So we'd like to know of the employees who actually test positive, so we'd like to know the probability they test positive given, this is a conditional probability, uh, what percent of employees who test positive actually use drugs? Sorry, let me restate that. Among those who test positive, that's our condition, test positive actually use drugs. So for this conditional probability, we want uh, yes drugs, not that we want that, and test positive, that's our numerator, divided by the probability they test positive. So the probability of testing positive is the number we just had, this value, that we got in part A. And the numerator has to be one of those two values from the denominator. And the numerator is testing positive and testing positive and actually using drugs. That would be this one, 0 .0, 0 0.036. So calculating that, 0 0.036 divided by 0.084. 0.429. So there's a about a 43% chance that if someone tests positive, there's a 43% chance that they actually use illegal drugs. That might sound a little counterintuitive. So this is often why places of employment, if you do test positive, they'll probably have you do a second test. It all really depends on the specificity and sensitivity so these values up here, really depends how accurate the test is. Uh, and those kind of percentages are uh, being talked about a lot nowadays at the recording of this video um, because of COVID and vaccinations and vaccines and things. Uh, and not only vaccinations, but also um, tests to determine if you have COVID-19, um, the false positive or false negative rate. But anyway, I guess that's for another time. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.